Hello everyone, my name is Nero Raven and welcome to the Xander Zone. This is going to be the last FNAF Ruin Theory video as I think we have covered everything we could with this last theory video, as well as I have some FNAF movie theories lined up. Now, one of the theories is less of a theory, more of a confirmation that the Mimic AI is canon to the game universe. For that connection, I wanted to thank Key and Wolf for pointing out this theory to me in the last video. If you want to be featured in my next theory video, please leave your theories down below and if I think it's a good theory, I'll put it in the next video. Also, I will be live tomorrow on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash narrowraven playing Fights of Freddy's Security Breach before Ruin comes out, so if you come hang out, say hi, it would mean a lot to me. If you all enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe so we can reach our next goal of 300 subscribers for the end of the year. And now without further ado, let's get right into the video with the first theory, which is... This theory was commented on one of my past theory videos by Kean Wolf, and I haven't seen anyone else mention this, so I thought I'd chuck it into this video. So thank you, Kean Wolf, for commenting this theory. So first, I want to point out everything that starts out with the signs of this, and then go more in depth with it. So first, I want to get into the books. In the books, the mimic was designed for Henry's child to essentially be a parent while he was at work. His child was eventually unalived in a car accident on the highway when she chased a ball into the highway, and since the mimic mimicked her every action, he dismantled the mimic, but left it functional, and as a result of mimicking what it sees, it will dismantle everything that would get near it essentially. So now how would this show us that the stat bots are being controlled by the Mimic AI? Well I can tell you exactly which ones are controlled and which ones aren't, so here we go. The first point of evidence for this is of course, the aggressive ones compared to the ones that are just doing their job patrolling. So specifically I want to point out the marionette stat bots seem to be the most under control if not fully under control by the Mimic. Now why would the Mimic decide to choose the marionette style for these stat bots? Well the answer is kind of in our face. If the Mimic was following us throughout the games, or even knew what happened to Charlotte with her becoming the marionette, or even if the marionette was her favorite animatronic, we can assume this is him essentially mimicking the marionette's look because the Mimic remembers how much a marionette meant to Charlotte, or even admired the marionette's work to protect Charlotte even after the incident sacrificed itself to be with Charlotte in her last moments. So that's my first point to tell if they are under control of the Mimic. Now let's get into the second point which is actually in the same Vanny ending. Look at what the staff bots do to Freddy. They essentially dismantle them, and if they were under the control of, well, the Mimic, they're mimicking what Henry did to the Mimic, which would make a lot of sense, now wouldn't it? Now, when they become under control, their eyes turn red, so there's point number two to figure out if they are under control. Then the last point is figuring out what stage they are in. The security bots or any basic bots like the ones in Bonnie Bowl are unaffected just doing their jobs, not knowing that they are luring the Mimic to your location. Then we have the marionettes face one. Now, as you know, some of these are still friendly like during the Save Vanny ending, you see them patrolling like normal security bots. This I believe is a sign to show that they are in the process of being taken over like they have been selected, essentially. Then if they are aggressive, like the ones that show up if you fall in the Dismantle Chica section, they are fully under control. So we can assume that the ones in which their eyes go red or they have the marionette look to it, they are going to be or are fully under the Mimic's control. Which if the red eyes are true, just thought I'd point out that in the trailer for FNAF Security Breach, Chica, Roxy, Monty, and Freddy's eyes glow red. So who knows, maybe Freddy was supposed to eventually turn against us and red eyes are supposed to be an indicator of that. Which I actually do think that was true, I think there was something in the files that showed us that, but if I can find it, I'll show it here. If I can't, I will put it in the description once I do find it. So yeah, that's essentially it for this section. Now I want to get into the next section, which is... Okay, so this theory I just threw together. I saw the new Tales from the Pizzaplex book and found some interesting things in it that I think is happening in the games. Okay, so future Raven here. Um, as I finished recording this, I went to go get lunch, and as I was scrolling through YouTube, I saw that Riotos posted a video that was essentially this theory. He beat me to the punch, and I just wanted to quickly say that I did not intentionally take anything from him or steal anything from him. Just our theories are similar, and we had the same thoughts, so it's just pure coincidence. But if you guys can, go check out Raitos. He's a great YouTuber. I take a lot of inspiration from him. And he's just a great guy all around. So please do go check him out. But I don't want to keep you any longer. So let's continue. So let's get into it. So if you want an explanation of the Mimic again, I'll give a nice and short one. The Mimic is a creation by Henry to watch his child while he was at work. This child was unalived on the highway due to chasing a ball into the highway. Henry was angry at the Mimic and ruthlessly destroyed it. This imbued the Mimic with some form of agony. However, the Mimic was eventually repaired by Henry's workplace after Henry disappeared and they found it. It dismantled the workers and disappeared and while well, now it's here in Security Breach through a lot of different things. Though I want to get into the theory. So I'm not a fan of reading books, however I did read the Tales from the Pizzaplex books in my spare time as they seem to be more intertwined in the games than the last two series of books. 
The book Tiger Rock has a very interesting epilogue and I think gives us a hint as to what is going on with Burn Trap and specifically who is in control of Burn Trap. In the epilogue of Tiger Rock, a bunch of teens sneak into the pizza plex and mess around and they encounter the Mimic. The Mimic proceeds to unalive them one by one. Now forgive me if I'm not remembering her name, but I believe it was Kelly and her other friend try hiding from the Mimic in suits. It works, but the Mimic wanders off but comes back as fast as possible as it is fascinated with her suit. He puts it on and, well, YouTube demonetization happens very, very brutally. So how do I think this explains what is going on with Burn Trap? Well, here's the thing. I don't think this quite explains it, rather it explains what could have happened with Burn Trap, specifically how it came to be. The Burn Trap was made by the Mimic by him trying to essentially force himself into Spring Traps or William Afton's suit. However, if you look at Burn Trap's design, there's no way it would look this nice if the Mimic forced himself into the suit. Where I think it was put on by assistance, either by Vanny or someone else. Now, how this would have been done, I'm not exactly sure. However, I know that Vanny would have had to have been around when the Mimic was trying to get into the Burn Trap suit, or the Mimic gave up and asked Vanny for help. There is one thing I want to address though that can help us determine who is in control of Burn Trap. As you know in the books, the Mimic was, well, having very white glossy eyes with orange colored eyes. So how does this explain his eyes turning black and purple? I think I have an idea. It's Afton's agony taking over the suit, turning his eyes black and purple. This makes me think that the marionette's crying shrieks were formed by agony, as well as since they are gone on the blob, which could explain a lot of design changes in the future of FNAF. Though, here's what I think is going on with Burn Trap. William's agony is infecting the suit. However, the mimic is under control of, well, the influence of William's agony. So, I may do a full video as to what is going on with Mimic and how he came to be and all that fun stuff in the next video. But there's one more theory I want to get out of the way, which is... This is also another weird theory, however, I can see this one happening based off of the screenshots from the laser reveals from Daco's charity stream. Now, however, I think we have some proof of this from the books, and those screenshots have proof of this. So, let's go to the books first. In the book, specifically the Tales from the Pizzaplex books, there is a story of a character going to the Pizzaplex and essentially hearing someone trapped, and we don't know what happens at the end of it. However, we do know that it's someone important. I've heard a lot of theories of who this trapped person is, or soul, or spirit, it could be anyone from Cassie to Charlotte to even William. That is not what we are debating today. So, if this spirit or soul or whatever it is, is an important character that we may already know of, if anything, I can indeed see this being one of the missing children, or even Charlotte, but was trapped as a result of maybe trying to come back and stop the mimic. Now, let's get into the second piece of evidence, which is the screenshots. Specifically, there is one screenshot that I want to point out. It's this one with Monty in an arcade cabinet. Now, first glance at this screenshot looks normal, but if you look at the arcade cabinet, there's a mask on an almost perfect condition looking Monty golf game that we play in the main game. This mask is specifically Monty's mask, and I thought this was interesting, since this seems to be a parallel to the masks used in the Happiest Day minigame, more specifically the shape of the masks. Now this could be me being picky, but look at the shape of the green one. Definitely looks more like a gator mask than a frog mask. However, they were here during the Happiest Day minigame. Plus, we know that masks are very common for spirits to wear in this universe, so why would the mask just be here after the shutdown of the Pizza Plex? I think the Happiest Day may be something different compared to what it was then, though if anything I'm just being picky. Plus, there isn't much evidence to this other than the books and a photo that I'm probably taking out of context, but there's a chance it could happen, and I think it would be really cool, especially with theories that Charlotte's in the Pizza Plex somewhere and Cassidy is somewhere in the Pizza Plex, so maybe those are the important characters. Alright, that's it for this video and for the FNAF Ruin series as of right now. I'm currently thinking of making a Mimic video to explain exactly what is going on with him, but as of right now, I'm running out of things to theorize about for FNAF Ruin. However, there are some FNAF movie theories that I've been thinking of that I cannot wait to get out to you all. Also, just so you know, I will be live on Twitch tomorrow at 9am CST at twitch.tv slash narrowraven. I hope to see you there, and if you could drop a follow and say hi, it would mean so much to me. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe button, comment down below your theories for a chance to get into my next videos, or just comment down how your day was and share this with friends and family because every bit helps and I hope we can reach that 300 subscriber goal. Other than that, I hope you have a great day and see you in the next video.